Muy buenas gente, estamos en la siguiente parte de Thailand Lies Ahora sí, esta es la parte final, no voy a seguir viendo más Esto será lo último O sea, esto ya es más morbo que, que otra cosa Porque, o sea, pónganse en mi parte No estoy haciendo casi nada, o sea, solo estoy viendo los videitos y comentando un poco Pero de ahí estos son los que hablan por lo tanto, hasta aquí, hasta aquí queda la serie. Me he entretenido conociendo la historia de David, David. Ya sé que es un agente del FBI. O sea, estoy bastante contento con lo que he averiguado. También quisiera averiguar más, pero... Siento que este juego no es el tipo de juego para mí. Snow White. It's a little more cynical than Snow White, so. Yeah, not bad. No, don't do that, okay? Use your real voice. I'm not, I told you, I'm not mad at you, okay? No, it's this asshole. I, this, this asshole, he did some bad things to a friend of mine a few years ago, I found out about. So, she was underage, she had good drugs, and he made videos. Self-righteous groups. The morals in the name of the slight moral circles. We'll kill them. No, no, because I mean, half of me just wants to be on bars and in prison, and the other half just wants to beat his ass. So. You know, you're pretty smart for a blonde. Valentine's Day, it's the busiest week of the year. New girls get all the traffic, so it's a new me, a new name, a new look. I'm athletic and sporty. This one plays a little too young for my tastes. See, I add blonde to my tags and a hundred guys show up asking me to call him daddy. Oh, I am no longer French. 
If it helps, my, my mother was French. Most of it is her story. I inherited and put it to use. <sighs> there is no loyalty in this business. You all like fresh meat. And you don't tip enough to be a regular. Don't be mad, David. I mean, we're still here, talking. I like hanging out with you. But there is a limit to how deep we go on here. I'm behind this glass right here. Do you see that? And this is fantasy land. Anyway, you are a good guy. I actually like you. Can we start over? How was your day, honey? Don't be angry. Sound mad. Well, tell me about it. You mean arrest him? One less creep in the world to start. Are you telling me this so I could talk you down? Well, why not do both? Beat his ass and then put him behind bars. Or option C, we play around for a bit. And relax. No, you really want to be a regular. We need to consummate this thing, Davy. Bastante interesante. O sea, cuando David. She had. David tiene tres facetas. No, cuatro. La faceta de Ramero, cuando anda con, con esta mujer del buen vivir. La segunda, cuando está con su esposa. Y la tercera, con, cuando está con su novia. Y la cuarta, cuando está como agente del FBI. Oh, hey, babe. You, you, you doing okay? Yeah, things are a little hard right now, honey, so we just have to be strong for Mama, you know? Uh, okay, sure, you, you... Mm. Do you want one from your book, or...? Oh, okay. I'll just, uh, all right. Um, do you know the story of Rumpelstiltskin? Mm-hmm. Okay, sure, yeah. Um, all right, let me see if I can remember. Um, okay, well, once upon a time, there was a girl. And she was the daughter of a miller, I think, which is a kind of farmer. And she had the most beautiful blonde hair. And it was so beautiful, it caught the sun like it was gold. It was so beautiful. Well, maybe she becomes one. Just shh, wait and see. All right. So her father, he liked to tell tall tales. Okay. And one day he boasted to the king that his daughter was so talented that she could spin straw into pure gold. All right? And the king, he called him out on his bluff, and he summoned the girl, and he said that if she could truly make gold from straw, that he, he would allow her to marry his son, the prince. But if not, he'd chop off her head, okay? Yeah, because he's a very severe king. Well, I mean, then she'll be a queen, and in the old days, most of the girls wanted to marry a prince, right? So, I like that. Anyway. The king, 
he locks the girl in a tower with a spinning wheel and a small pile of straw. And he says he's going to return in the morning, all right, to see if she has made the straw into gold. And the night passes, and in the morning, she's given up all hope, right, when all of a sudden, a little small strange man appears, okay? And he asks her if she has any wishes, and she says she wishes to turn the straw into gold, right? And so the imp says he can do such a thing, but first she must give him her necklace. So the girl gives up her necklace, of course, and the imp, he sits at this spinning wheel, and he starts to spin, and he spins, and he spins, and he spins, and he produces this pile of golden thread. And then there's this knock at the door, right? Because it's morning, and, and he just disappears, and the king comes in, and there's this small pile of gold, and he is amazed. The king is so amazed, but he's suspicious because he thinks this might be a fluke, you know what I mean? So he moves her to a second tower with an even bigger pile of straw. And again, same challenge. Spin the straw into gold by morning or off with your head. So the girl waits and waits all night long, and then again, just before dawn, that little imp appears, okay? And this time, he demands her ring. So she, of course, she gives him a ring, and he spins the gold into straw, and then he disappears, and the king comes in, and there's this pile of gold, and the king is almost convinced, but for a final time, he throws her in a third tower with a huge pile of straw, and he says, you gotta turn this straw into gold, and he leaves. And yet again, just before dawn, that imp appears. But the girl, she doesn't have any jewelry left, right? So what's she going to do? And the imp says, if you give me your firstborn child, I'll turn this straw into gold. And the girl, she's so terrified that she says, yes, of course, of course. And the imp he spins the entire huge pile of straw into gold. And right before the king walks in, he disappears. And the king opens up the door, and he's so excited, he can't believe in it. He says, truly, you are magical, he says. That's his voice. And then the very next day, the girl, she's married to the prince, right? And, and despite all the weirdness of this marriage, they actually really like each other. In fact, they fall in love. And two years later, that little girl, now a princess, is pregnant. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for that. Now, in the summer, she gives birth to this beautiful baby daughter. Okay? But her, her happiness about this new little girl, it's, it's short-lived because guess who comes back? The imp. The imp reappears and he says, I've I've come to collect my reward, he says, and the baby is mine. And the princess, she sobs, and she offers him, like, all the riches in the, in the kingdom. But he insists. He says, I want that baby. And she begs, she begs him, please, to... And finally, the imp says, okay. If you can guess my name within three days, you can keep the baby. But if not, the baby is mine as we agreed, and he leaves, and the princess, she is distraught. I mean, she immediately sends all of her staff and her servants out into the kingdom to figure out this little imp's name. But by midnight of that first day, no one's been able to track down anything, or the creature, or his name, and the imp, he appears, and he asks her, What is my name? And she guesses, Is it David? And he laughs, he says, no, two more guesses, and he leaves. And the next day, nothing. Nobody comes back with any information, and he arrives again at midnight. And she guesses this time. No, 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 it's not. He says, no. <laughs> laughs the imp, okay? He says, no, and he leaves. It's not Stephen. And the next day... The princess is so upset because she doesn't know what to do. She only has one more guess, one more day. So she leaves the baby with her servants and she just walks into the forest because she's so worried she's going to lose her baby. And she wanders and wanders all day and into the evening. She wanders and suddenly she comes on a small clearing. 
okay? You have a little field, and in that little field is a little tent, and in the center of it, there is a little small fire, and she hides. She hides behind a bush. And out of the tent, to her amazement, out comes the imp. And he's dancing around the fire, right? And he sings, Today, today, plans I make. Tonight, tonight, the baby I take. The princess will never win the game for Rumpelstiltskin is my name. And smiling to herself, the, the princess runs back to the castle because she heard his name. And the, that evening, the imp arrives, right? And he's, he's kind of gloating and he asks her his name. And the princess kind of looks at you. She's kind of pretending to be sad. And she gnashes her teeth a little bit. But then she looks him in the eye and she says, your name's Rumpelstiltskin. And the imp, his eyes bulge and he looks like he's got, he's got a burst and his head goes, I mean, red. He shakes it like he's going to explode. And all of a sudden it's Oh, do you think he should? Okay, well, then Rumpelstiltskin ran away and he never came back. And the princess became queen and her daughter grew up to be a wonderful queen in her own right. And everyone lived happily ever after. Yeah? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know, maybe he was, uh, maybe he was lonely. It's just a story. You do? I guess, uh, I mean, now that you mention it, most of the people in the story were bad. <laughs> you would? Okay. Well, honey, I, I I have to go out. I'm afraid. So, but yeah, hey, you've got hey, you got your glow worm, right? Oh, I love that name. That's a great name. All right, come here. Give me a kiss, real quick. Mm -hmm. Love you, kid. Night, night. Stiltskin? Okay, is um is mama still there? Okay. I guess I'll uh speak to her later. Okay, um so once upon a time there was a girl who had long long blonde hair that people said looked like gold. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, there was a girl called... Okay, so Emma, <clears throat> she has long blonde hair. And she really wants to marry the prince. But she's just a farmer's daughter. Right? Well, one day the king comes riding through her village to water his horses. And she hears about it, and so she urges her father to go go to the king and boast about his daughter and her long, beautiful hair. And while he's doing that, she quickly throws on some of her best jewelry, but when her father stands before the king, he gets really nervous and he misspeaks and he tells the king that his daughter can spin straw into gold. And the, the king is intrigued. He asks the girl to confirm, is this true? Can you spin straw to gold? But she wants to win the king's favor, so Emma says, yes, yes, I can spin gold from straw. But the king's no fool. So he decides to call her bluff and he proposes a challenge. 
If you can turn strong to gold, you may marry my son, the prince. But if not, you will be exiled, which means kicked out. Well, Emma, she's unable to refuse such an offer, so she accepts. And the king takes her to his castle, and he locks her into a, one of his towers. And there in the tower room is a spinning wheel with a large pile of straw. And he says he'll return in the morning to see if she can actually spin this straw into gold. Well, Emma, she spends all night trying to think of some excuse or, you know, clever way to get out of this situation. But as dawn approaches, nothing. She really starts to worry. And that is when a strange man appears. And he asks her if she has a wish. And she says, I wish uh, to turn this straw into gold. And he says, I can do that, but you must give me your necklace. Well, the girl quickly takes off her necklace, and the imp sits at the, at the spinning wheel, and he starts to spin and spin, and he spins all of the straw into a large pile of golden thread. And then there's a knock at the door, and the imp disappears, and the king comes in, and he sees the small pile of gold, and he's amazed, but he's a little suspicious. So he moves the girl to a second tower, and this time there's a much larger pile of straw. Okay, and it's again, it's the same challenge. You spin that straw into gold, marry the prince. If not, you kicked out of the kingdom. And yet again, just by morning, the girl, she waits, and again, there's nothing. She can't do it. But right then, that imp appears again. And this time, he asks for her ring. And so she gives him her ring. He sits down. He spins that much larger pile of straw into gold, and boom disappears right at dawn, right before the king walks in, and he sees this larger pile of gold, and he's almost convinced. But for a final time, the king moves that girl to a third tower, where there is a huge pile of straw. And he locks the door again. And yet again, just before dawn, that imp appears. But this time, the girl, she doesn't have any jewelry to give him. What can she do? Well, the imp, he smiles, and he tells her, that if she will give him her firstborn child, then he will spin the straw into gold. Well, Emma, she has no option but to say yes. So the imp, he sits at the spinning wheel and he spins that huge pile of straw into golden thread. And he disappears right before dawn and the king walks in and he opens the door and the king is amazed. He says, I thought you were lying, but you are for real. And the very next day, the girl is married to the prince. And on her wedding day, she smiles wider than she's ever smiled before. And her hair shines like gold itself. And a year later, Princess Emma gives birth to a beautiful baby girl. And, and later that week, she's putting that little baby into a cot when suddenly, that little man appears again, that imp, and he says, I have come for what is mine, the baby. And the princess, she, she begs and begs and please, no, don't take my baby, I'll give you anything. She offers him all the riches in the kingdom. She offers him everything, but he refuses. So she gets on her knees and she pleads, please, please, I'll give you anything. And he says, okay, if you can guess my name, I will not take your baby. But if you cannot, the baby is mine. I will give you three guesses. And then he disappears. <gasps> And the princess, she's, she's terrified. So she calls in all of her staff and, and the, all the spies and the soldiers or anyone who has a horse to go and scour the kingdom to figure out this little imp's name. And the next day, the first spy returns and he tells her, oh, okay, sure. Uh, okay, Daniel. Uh, so the imp appears and he asks if she has a guess and she says, Daniel? But the imp laughs, wrong, two more guesses, and he disappears. And the very next day, another spy returns. But this time he says that he's heard villagers talking about a strange man who lives in the mountains. Now, his... No, 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 honey, that would end the story too soon. You know, a little too soon. Ah, okay, all right. Uh, well, okay, in that case, the spy returns and says Rumpelstiltskin is this strange man's name, and the princess waits in a room, and at midnight the imp arrives, and he says, now your second guess, and he cackles, and he's gonna rub it in his hands, and the princess smiles and looks him in the eye, and she says, 
Rumple Stiltskin. And the imp is amazed. I mean, he's so surprised that he faints like right in front of her and Emma has him arrested and thrown in the deepest, darkest dungeon and she lives happily ever after and the end. Okay. Um, have a good night. I love, I love you. Hey. You okay? Chicos, por esto el video tan largo. Vamos, vamos, quiero atrás, quiero atrás. Vamos. O sea, no, los videos no son tan fluidos, o sea, hay partes donde no hablan, debido a que es una conversación entre un video anterior o un video que no hemos visto. O sea, cuando se queda callada es porque está escuchando lo que el otro está diciendo. Y cuando llegamos a ese video, él se queda callado cuando este está hablando. O sea, David. Ok. Vamos, ya te digamos. Oh, van a haber mucho silencio. Sí, van bueno, a haber muchos silencios. <ríe> Espero que YouTube no me no me vaya <ríe> a tirar el video por contenido inadecuado.
Someone did a number on your face? Of course, I'll never stop you from telling me about yourself. I find you fascinating. Sucks for you. Girlfriend before? Okay. I am doing great. Thank you for asking. The weather is a bit colder, so men are spending more time in front of the computers, and I'm a bit tired. Pretending to come is hard work. nothing out there. Come on, Davy, there is this. And then there is this. What goes inside here? Okay, this is my body. In a costume, on this silly bed, streaming through this camera. You go on the streets, and you put yourself on the like, you put your life on the line in a way I have never done. So if I turn this camera off, I walk out this room, that's me. None of these men even know my real name. Now would I lie to a federal agent? No, you're going to bug me about my real name. I tell you a true story. I used to work in real estate. I would take a man to look around apartments. I'd go into these places on my own, knowing at any moment they could jump me. I'd take my heels off at the entrance, and I would make sure that it was in a sexy way. And then when we would get to the bedroom, I would sit on the bed with the garters and a short skirt. You know what I was doing? I was selling him a fantasy. No contract, no safety. I felt I gave more of myself selling apartments to men than I do here. <laughs> no, 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 in, uh, here, in New York. Before I start the camping, there was a girl who put me on it, um, it was a model we used for a bedroom video shoots. She told me how much she earned doing cam work, and I was intrigued. She was a brunette and tall like your police station vampire. You would have liked her. Hmm. Careful, Davy. That sounded like an admission. Shouldn't you have your lawyer present or hmm? I promise, we get to know each other better, I tell you, I'll give you my real name.
be safe out there. You are one of the good guys. Ahí termina, bastante interesante. Ok. Bien, vamos a ver si encuentro algo más. Lo vemos, si no, aquí acaba esta serie. Bueno, eso sería todo. Espero que les haya gustado este video, esta serie. Bastante rara, o sea... Supongo que este tipo de juegos no son para mí. O sea, juegos donde... Casi no haces nada, donde te limitas a observar. Denle like, suscríbanse para que traiga más contenido. Yo soy Dark, nos vemos en la próxima. ¡Chao!